What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. We have a lot to discuss. First of all, I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, this is the movie that everybody's been sort of waiting for since No Way Home. We had discussed this for some time now that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness would be a movie that would be highly anticipated and uh, would possibly make a lot of money at the box office. Had a great weekend. Let's see how long it lasts. Brian, I went to the movies. I was supposed to go see it on Saturday with my son, but I went to go see it on Friday because I needed to take him somewhere. So I went to go see it Friday. I saw the movie. I canceled the next show on Saturday. I didn't go see it. I didn't want to go see it. Um, you and I spoke briefly about the movie and what uh, we didn't really let too much in terms of what we liked and what didn't like. We sort of vaguely agreed on, on, on some of the aspects of the film without, I guess, uh, getting into any particulars, Brian, but man, I was very, very underwhelmed by this movie. It's hard to describe what I was left underwhelmed with. Perhaps we can discover that. I know there's some things in particular um, that you liked and, and certain things that really didn't sit well with you as the as it didn't sit well with me. I was very upset at some things that we'll certainly get into regarding Kevin Feige and what he had uh, stated in regards to the trailer showing a little bit too much. And perhaps some other things flew under the radar. I don't know. But with all the reshoots, happening brian and and you know we had our uh thoughts about all the reshoots and we gave it the benefit of the doubt you know this is you know, marvel storylines are always changing and and they want to make sure that everything fits but this didn't seem like it i mean this was his own self-contained film pretty much but it didn't expand on the multiverse although it was a cool I, un I liked some of the things, Brian, and we'll get into. Um, I want to hear your thoughts, and then we can get a little bit deeper with this film. But what were your first um, thoughts when you left the film and then the hours that passed along as uh, the more you thought of, about this film? What did you think? Well, I hope the Earth 838 version of this movie is good because the Earth 616 movie is not. <laughs> that's my tagline and I feel like this movie has some incredible individual high points and when I I may lead with my rating here just to very clearly delineate those mm -hmm. points mm -hmm. but if not for those small you know, well small to, to individualized high points if you showed me this movie without telling me the studio that made it, I'd have told you this was a Sony movie and not a Marvel movie. And that's about the biggest insult that I can lob at Kevin Feige and company these days. And I say that from the standpoint of you don't hold, I don't think we should hold Marvel to the same standard as Sony you become the victim of your own success, right? It's no different than like, you know, we, we, show up for, we show up for a playoff game. You know, Michael Jordan gives you 18 points and six assists. That's a massive disappointment for the greatest player of all time. Mm -hmm. Your eighth man gives you 18 points and six assists. We celebrate that and call that a win. I expect when I go to Morbius or Venom, I kind of expect the garbage truck to show up in my driveway, <laughs> at least for part of the part of the film. 
Yeah, yeah. But when I go to a movie that has the multiverse in the title, and I'm being told by Marvel that this is the jump point for kind of the big thrust and theme of, of what we're doing here. And I get these two hours. I'm kind of out on the multiverse. I'm like, y'all might need to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new idea because if this is what you can do with it, I don't know that we're going to be super duper happy five or six movies from now. So I know that sounds really harsh, but and all that being said, I'll actually, I'll start with the rating. So I'm giving this film two stars, but it's a very specific two stars. And I really want to highlight that. I'm giving Marvel a full star for the second half of this movie because they took a real swing at a genre. The second half of this movie is straight up a Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees comic book version of The Terminator and mm -hmm. slasher films. And I, I can't ask Marvel on one hand to try something new and then totally dismiss them when they give me an hour that is totally different than I've seen in the other 28, 27 movies. So I give them a full star for trying it, even though I don't think they totally landed. Yeah. I give them a half star. I give Elizabeth Olsen her own half star because I think her part is problematic and I do want to talk about that, but I think she played it really really well and if yeah. you watched wandavision i like the arc that she individually carries from where we leave her in endgame and infinity war through the tv show through this film so i give her her own half star i think mean, the part has issues but i think she plays it really well and the idea that elizabeth olsen could actually credibly on screen be this half-bloodied zombie murderer it's not something I saw coming when they cast her. So I give yeah. her that credit. Yeah. The last half star I give them is this, in my opinion, this film has two of the best action scenes Marvel's put on screen. I really loved, uh, we'll talk about it, the music note fight. And I actually really loved the Illuminati quote unquote fight. Just in isolation, ignoring everything else around. Just the way they were staged, what we saw on screen. I give that its own half star. Mm -hmm. That's it. Those are the two stars. To me, the rest of the movie, you can leave it. And if and to your point about canceling your second showing, now I do want to go back and see this just to see if I'm still as angry coming out of the second one as I now am about the first viewing. Yeah. But if someone was coming to me and said, hey, this movie did 450 million a global box opening weekend, I got to check this out, right? I would say hard pass, wait for Disney Plus, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Like see it, but watch WandaVision first and then see this on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. So those are my summary remarks. But you don't have to give your rating now. I just felt like it was helpful yeah, yeah. to frame it. Remind me to give you, give, uh, for me to give you the, my rating on, on this film. But um, I'll talk, I'll say some of the things I hated. You pointed to one of them. I, although cleverly done, to me, killing off the Illuminati in that world, whatever, right? I, I mean, at least incapacitate, you know, be a little bit more clever and incapacitate and turn Fat Miss Reed Richards into liquid. I don't know. Um, make uh, Professor X go crazy in his, br in his brain, right? Um, Perhaps kill one Captain Marvel. That would have been, but it, she killed everybody pretty much. The stones falling on Monica Rambeau, and that was. Ugh. I can see that in a regular film with regular people happen. You know what I'm saying? So, I think killing them off, especially characters, everybody was sort of waiting to see, <laughs> and they killed them off like nothing. Understandably, you know, we understand that, you know, Scarlet Witch has powers and she's pretty much unstoppable, right? But 
even Thanos, when he when he showed up at Wakanda, they didn't kill him. He was just like, you know, incapacitating them. That wasn't his goal. Her, I think, killing off the Illuminati, you know, breaking. I mean, it was just I don't know. For me, it, it just felt lame. I didn't care. I didn't care about it. You know, um, the other thing that I felt was um, troubling and upsetting was the fact that in the trailers they showed Professor X's his, uh, his uh, chair. They showed the Living Tribunal. And it was the same shot in the movie. Yeah. What was the point of releasing it in the trailer if nothing was going to come of it? Was it for us to be like, oh, snap, the Living Tribunal, let me go see it. Were you trying to trick us? Because you didn't have faith in your movie that you needed to show this? Bingo. That's it, man. I, I, because when you assess the rest of this movie, I just think there's so many problems in this. It, it just doesn't have enough cool moments. They went to they went to the heavyweight material to get people out. And they had to get people buzzing. They had to get people talking. And, you know... I mean, I guess the short the short of it is other than the mu other than the music note fight. Yeah, that was that was pretty dope. <laughs> it, was, it, was, was dope. it was just creative, right? We'll get yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that fight, name one thing super duper cool in this movie that wasn't in the trailer. Somewhere. It's not I can't think of anything. Yeah. I can't think of anything. The stuff that wasn't in the trailers was kind of meh. And yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I kind of had a sense, and I said this on our preview show that like the bar was set too high, that I felt like this this was gonna disappoint the expectations around things like the Illuminati with all the but if you want to just start with that scene, why don't we just start with that scene? I mean it's fine. That felt pretty meta to me. That whole which sequence. one again? The Illuminati sequence felt okay, pretty okay. meta to me, right? It felt like a we know the fans want this, right down to the fact that John Krasinski has been one of the leading choices among fans to play Mr. Fantastic. And it felt like they were kind of mixing, we're going to do a little fan service and give you that. We're going to give you Professor X's chair. And by the way, I will give them credit. When they hit the notes for the animated music, I was like, all right, that's cool. I love that. That's pretty hot. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they were doing it to make you smile. They were doing it to make you cheer. And then, you know, I said, I actually, I like the action sequence on its own. Like, if it didn't have all this baggage. I like it simply because, I, as you know, I'm always a fan of, like, superhero on superhero fights where there's not a lot of distraction, not a lot of other characters. And... You know, they get to showcase their power. And in this case, yeah, Scarlet Witch is freaking powerful. So she got, I mean, this was Tyson Spinks, basically. Yeah. <laughs> basically. Um, yeah. And so I did like the fact that there was a finality to it. But as it fit the whole rest of the movie, the whole killing off thing felt more like a killing off of fan dreams, right? It kind of was like, oh, you thought we were going to do this? Nah, done. Patrick Stewart, done. Yeah, See, I don't think, I don't know what you think. Yeah. I don't think Krasinski's playing Reed Richards. Me I think this was like, we'll show it to you because you wanted it for so many years. And like, we're going to turn him into spaghetti in 30 seconds <laughs> to let you know that he ain't going to be Mr. Either. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. That's how I interpreted that whole That's what, I, I, was, I was hearing that as well, yes. I was hearing that as well. But if to me, uh, I just don't like the way they went about it, though. I just don't like the way. It <sighs> well, the whole thing was a bait and switch because the Illuminati yeah. really didn't mean anything. Yeah. To this, that doesn't mean they won't mean something to some other story down the road, but they didn't mean anything to the broader narrative of this universe. Yeah. Okay, I see that. But if you think about this, you ask the question, was there anything else that you remember outside of that sequence with the, the fighting of the... Yeah, they they sh they pretty much showed you that entire film, yo. They gave you yeah. each piece of that yes. film in the trailer, and it's like I don't know how Kevin Feige let that slip. 
Bye. His comments were weird. How did he not know? Like he was kind of he was kind of ripping the trailers after the fact. And I'm like, do you talk to marketing? Is that how that works? The creative doesn't talk to marketing when they promo this? Maybe and he, it seemed like maybe he didn't he, know. He maybe he trusted somebody to get it right. He said, I, I trust you. And it, I don't know. Something went wrong there. Something definitely went wrong there. Because... All right, so let's back up a bit because I want to start with this headline question. This is not a Doc Strange movie. So what do you make? Like, not really. Like, he, yeah. he's... Well, I'll say this, Brian. One of the things that I did enjoy about this film was that really sort of when I first saw it on screen and how it was developing and where this guy was leading to us, when he asked Dr. Strange, this was in a church, Mm-hmm. He asked Dr. Strange, was that really the only way? That was like, I was like, word, was that really the only way? And then throughout the movie, they sort of tell you that Dr. Strange and these realities went, did the wrong stuff just to save everything. But he, he went, he did something that he wasn't supposed to do just to save everyone. So they were questioning Doctor Strange or all the Doctor Stranges from all, you know, their, their, um, I don't know if it's morality, but he'll do anything to anyone else in order for him to, to, to save the world, but to him for, to survive, sort of, you know, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, no. So I think, I think you hit on it. I mean, I think, the, I think the, one of the messages of the movie is that it's never the only way. Um, because at the end, obviously, Zombie Strange chooses another way right he basically and and what i heard on another podcast was i thought it was a perfect summation of this which is dr stephen strange like the nature of being an elite surgeon which i am not effectively is you need to make those calls a lot of times and kind of make the determination of what is the only way to save a patient or to operate on a patient and it, which is which is what Christine Palmer alludes to when she says you have to be the one holding the knife. And so a lot of this movie is illustrating through America Chavez that in every universe, Strange is always holding the knife. He's always he won't let go of the outcome. He has to control it until the very end, where he kind of says, "No, I'm not here to take your power." I'm here to trust you to utilize it, which is the the evolution. But no, so I, I they were on to something there. Yeah. But it just didn't hit home. But my problem, but, but the problem with that to me is that like Strange gets sidelined so much in this movie. Like he is definitely, you know, he's John Stockton, right? Like he he's picking up assists, he's setting up people. He, almost like he was in no way home. But like, I just didn't feel like there was as much gravity to his progression. This was definitely Elizabeth Olsen's yeah. progression that we focused on. Yeah. So this whole thing you're talking about would have been great if we spent most of the two hours kind of going through all these universes, quite honestly, more the way they did in What If. Remember where he con- we saw him constantly going darker because he was trying to solve the same problem over and over again yeah. by not doing that in this movie it kind of made the payoff a little cheap to me where i was like mm-hmm. oh now he gets it but like we didn't really watch him fail over and over again for two hours yeah yeah true that so i, I don't how do you feel about an actor strange movie like do you view this as like they don't know how to write Doctor Strange as a true lead character or like do you view this as they're content to have him be this connective tissue to all these other characters and that's really his he has a leadership role but he's not really going to be the dude pulling the trigger in all these scenes anymore to me Ryan Doctor Strange uh, reminds me of the comic book Doctor Strange in terms of popularity. Some people liked him, but he wasn't never he was never big. 
And I think in the MCU, they've tried to make him, he's he's one of those characters that they try to raise his level and they haven't been able to do so. Um, so it's not to say that he's unpopular, He that he was unpopular in the comic books, but he wasn't like, he wasn't like Hulk. He wasn't Spider-Man. He was, you know, he was like sort of like a niche uh, character. And I think he's fallen into that sort of, Row here, and it's not to say that. Listen, that end credit scene, I didn't, I didn't care for it. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, but, I'm with you. So it's like I am not really. Uh, if they would have chosen to use Doctor Strange in, like he was, I think he was fine in, in No Way Home. Perhaps after this movie, then they won't do another Doctor Strange. He'll show up, but not. But he'll show up in situations where they need someone like him, and 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 then you can have that sort of revisit that conflict with with Doctor Strange holding the knife. But all all that's all I'm saying is that his world is not that interesting to me. So this is the part where I'm going to ask the question about the production issues and the rescheduling, because we know that this movie was supposed to come out originally. This movie was supposed to precede both No Way Home and WandaVision. We also know that based upon the movie we saw, there's, to me, and we'll get into it more when we talk about Elizabeth Olsen. The end result of this movie is a movie that I don't think you can understand unless you saw WandaVision first. Of course. Which implies that this movie was not just reshot, it was totally reworked. Mm -hmm. And I think Doctor Strange, the character, probably suffered because of that. And I think part of the things that stood out to me was when you see his interactions with America Chavez in this movie, and you know that this movie was supposed to come before No Way Home, and in the original concept of No Way Home, America Chavez was supposed to be the one opening the portals, not Ned Leeds. That was the original plan before the production schedule got messed up. Yeah. It makes a little more sense because honestly, his whole interplay with America Chavez looks like a copycat of his interplay with Peter Parker, right? We just mm -hmm. saw it and you're like, yeah, yeah. it's the same dynamic, but then you realize like it wasn't supposed to necessarily be that way when they drew this all up. And I think mm -hmm. that hurts Dr. Strange a bit in this case, because we just saw him handle Peter Parker similarly three months ago, or sorry, five yeah. months ago. Yeah, yeah. He, he was sort of playing the same mentor role as he yeah. did in that movie and, and yeah, uh, I agree with you. Uh, these changes that they decided to do uh, with the movie really hurt the character, I believe, of Doctor Strange. Um, and it became a whole other movie that really wasn't his, or I didn't feel he was the star, really. Nah, and like we now know from Sam Raimi that his cut was two hours and 40 minutes. We know that now Michael Walton we know that Michael Waldron wrote, wrote this movie, but also had to rewrite this movie because of everything we just discussed. I'm dying to know what the original version of this movie was because I just feel like this movie feels like a mess at points. Do you think, and you alluded to this uh, in the past, do you think Disney Plus is going to release the Sam Raimi cut? You know... I've said that this, I said it made sense because of the cameos. And we'll talk one, there's one of the cameo rumor, which I love, which if it's true, has to get put out there. But yeah, listen, if there's an original version of this movie that Sam Raimi wanted to show that was 30, or, if this is the real Marvel movie that should have been longer. Most Marvel movies are kind of like, eh, it's like two and a half hours. It could have been 215. This movie was 206. And I kind of feel like it would have benefited from being like 220. So I actually wish we could have seen whatever was taken, because I feel like whatever was taken out was probably more Cumberbatch, more America Chavez, more strange centric. And what we got left with was this running chase with against Scarlet Witch, mm -hmm. which is a different movie. That yeah. that's 
my theory and what happened. And it just, it doesn't land, it doesn't land for me. And if anything, I don't know what you thought. This felt like two movies in one. I know that Scott Derrickson never shot any part of this movie before he I, left, but the first hour and the second hour are not the same movie. They don't look the same. They don't yeah, taste no. the same. They don't sound the same. Yeah. I, that After seeing this film, I was wondering like, what, what does Scott Derrickson um, disagree with in terms of their creative differences? Where What happened there? Because I really would have loved to have seen his um, movie. And bizarrely, he said he left because he didn't get to make the movie wasn't horror enough for him. And I'm like, well, the second half of this movie is nothing but horror. So what yeah. exactly did you want to put in there <laughs> that we didn't get to see uh, that they didn't want to show us? So I don't know. It, it's fascinating. But like, yeah, look, we talk about we talk about movies that have production issues and lots of reshoots and it's common on big blockbusters. But this is one where it felt like it was a bridge too far and the scheduling and all the other moving parts just kind of engulfed the, the Cumberbatch character in particular. And I don't know, it just, it just made for a messy, strange movie. And I'm kind of like, like I said, now I'm like, we can loop in the credit scene if you want a little bit or talk about it more later, but like, it didn't leave me super excited to see Dr. Strange anchoring his next film. Nope. When I saw Dr. Strange will return, I was like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I, I, it's like, I don't care. I didn't care. Um, but let's talk about the Scarlet Witch. Because yeah, she certainly was the main focus of this film. This was your, if you want, if you wanted to do a movie for Mother's Day horror, a horror this was it. This was a Mother's Day's horror film. A lot of moms uh, are not happy with this movie, by the way, because of the way she's portrayed. I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of that online too. I've seen that most most women like this movie. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that don't like the whole like hell hath no fury like a woman scorned right and she's like i'm a mother and then she uses that as a justification to basically commit genocide like that that's not that's not going over super duper I, well with 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 some some people at least does this character have a redemption story oh yeah this is this is you hit on it <laughs> to me this is like well first off let's back up you and I obviously dissected WandaVision. I want to go back to this point. How can you understand this movie if you didn't watch that show? She isn't the Scarlet Witch in that costume in Endgame. But the first time we see her in this movie, she's got the dark hole. She's got the costume. Like, I think we got our answer as to how important these TV shows are. Because to me, her entire motivational arc in this film makes no sense unless you watched of course. her anguish in Westfield. If of you course. don't have that information, you're like, who the hell is this? <laughs> like what Wanda, what what Wanda Maximoff is that she wasn't any what kids, what are they talking about? She didn't have any of that in endgame. Yeah. Last yeah. I remember, she she was at, she was she was sad because of vision, but like what like this movie makes no sense. I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's unusual. Marvel typically hasn't demanded that you have to, other than maybe Endgame, which that's fine. That's its own animal. Put that to the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. With these, with these movies, like you know, as I said, I, I've been showing my 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 seven year old some of these movies. I would not show her this movie, mm -hmm. um, but like. You don't need to have seen Iron Man 1 to see First Avenger. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't really need to see Guardians of the Galaxy to appreciate Black Panther. Yeah. So it's been this, you have to see Wanda. Like, if you haven't seen WandaVision, her character, you'll just be sitting Makes there no for sense. two hours being like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> and that, that's a big bet by Disney. Yeah. To say that you've seen it. Well, I mean, I think obviously Kevin Feige in the past has said you you know for some of these movies you have to watch the shows. He's mentioned in the past. I don't think they did a good job of reminding people this time around. 
um, that if you're going to see WandaVision, I mean, it would have been cool for Kevin to say in these interviews, oh, listen, if you want to see and understand what's going on in Doctor Strange, you got to see WandaVision. Um, but I don't think there was a, a message or call to action to go do that. Uh, so if you went there to go see this movie and you had no idea, I mean, what was going on, that's that's why. I would bet a lot of critics who gave this movie a thumbs down had not seen the show. Because movie critics you don't think? often review... T- a lot of ah. movie critics don't review TV shows. Got right? It. So they get a screener of the film and like they've seen all the Marvel films. But like for them, there would have been a non sequitur of like, who, what, what? It's like, well, how, it cost you? how can you like this movie if you didn't see WandaVision? You can't. <laughs> you can't. Her entire emotional state why she does the things she does where wicked and speed came from originally are born in that tv show and like i said if you saw the tv show i think your your view of elizabeth olsen's performance will be elevated because you will understand how she's evolving and carrying her arc from the tv show into this film but without it i mean okay so you mentioned redemption to me <laughs> We know she's not dead at the end of this movie. To me, the 616 Wanda, I don't, I don't see it, man. Like, we spent this time 10 years ago talking about all the people that Henry Cavill killed in Man of Steel in the Battle of Metropolis. It was a lot easier time redeeming him than her. She murdered Kamertash. <laughs> she killed hundreds of people. She wiped out multiple superheroes, albeit in another universe. So what? We're going to, in, in the next crisis, we're going to just rescue her from under the mountain? Be like, oh, it was the Darkhold's fault. We're good. Like, and, and not for nothing, this is the same person who got the Sokovia Accords written because she blew up that building and killed the people from Wakanda. Same person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's a repeat offender <laughs> on a global scale. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll probably give her an out all she destroyed the dark hole in all the universes and stuff. Yeah, but you did that, man. Like your your body count is is she, astronomical. She, yeah, yeah. She's one of those that despite what good she does, you got to keep an eye on her. <laughs> you know, if she's rolling, you got to keep an eye on her. I don't care, you know. Um, and toss in the whole episode in Westview, and you're like, I'm saying, I'm like, she's bad like, news. I'm saying, so she gets in a room with like, you know, R.I.P. William Hurt, but the new Thunderbolt Ross, and it's like, whatever restriction he wants to put on her, what is her defense at this point? Yeah. yeah. What is the other Avengers defense to be like, oh yeah, we should just turn her loose? Yeah. I think I think this is gonna be a really hard future problem for them to solve. Actually, I really do. Because I it has all the earmarks of something that's gonna be cheap when it happens. And we're gonna sit here and be like, wait a minute, that's a little you know, because at least in like Endgame and Infinity War, because of the time travel, they were able to. On, right, so like if you if you were to say Thor blew it by not going for the head, well, at least they actually went back in time and like undid that. So like technically his slate is ninety nine percent clean. Mm. Like there's no going back from this in six one six, man. Yeah. I, I just... yeah, yeah. I mean, I think she becomes one of those people that they know she's around, but they're not going to mess with her. She, I mean. Scarlet Wanda has no reason to do any bad things now. She went, she found her kids, her kids didn't want her. That was the most, that was one of the things that she wanted the most. Yeah. And she was rejected. If she's alive, she's on her, on, on her own. Nobody's messing with her. Until mutants come along. And perhaps we get the no more mutants. And perhaps we get that scene in the comics where the X-Men tell, I think the Avengers, and and correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, 
uh, I think Cyclops says to the Avengers, hand her over or I'll burn burn her where she stands or kill her, whatever. I can't wait to see that because there's, there's people that don't like Wanda and that event i think is gonna gonna more more hatred towards her so that part i'm okay with so if they're gonna bring her back you know in a weird way she's like she really is playing the role of magneto's daughter even though they haven't acknowledged that she is right magneto to me is always the classic example of the the man who straddles both sides does awful things but then yeah he's got a point and he can do heroic things too right and so he Here's Wanda doing kind of her father's work, even though we don't really know in this universe yet that that she's his his daughter. But she's just crazy I, right now. But yeah, I think I think if you're gonna bring her back, you can't bring her back as a unambiguous force for good. You have to bring her, you can bring her back as a villain, and you can kind of bring her back as a like. Uh, we don't really want to go to this playbook, but we need we need you. And like, can mm-hmm. you kind of like, can we point you in the right direction for this one mission? Like, you can probably get away with that, but I think it's going to be tricky. I think it is going to be tricky. It's going to, and I, yeah, and it's going to be a while. And I think perhaps, I mean, there's no real reason to watch to see a Wanda to see her again what would be the reason to see her again other than mutants stuff but you need to so i will say they clearly have the credibility for her to say no more mutants now because now you've seen like darkhold or not like she's capable of some disastrous stuff but you need to bridge from where we are now to her credibly saying that and like having Mm -hmm. it have real impact she does have to appear somewhere like she can't just pop up and the next film we see her in is the No More Mutants film. There's got to be something in between, whether yeah. that's WandaVision season two or it's she has to be utilized in some other films um, in another way. I just, if they bring her out from under the mountain and it's literally just to deliver that line in some other yeah, like yeah, House yeah, of yeah, M yeah. story, it's not going to work. No, no. They ruin that, that, that moment. They ruin it if they do. Uh, now she played it great i do want to talk about this because like i don't know what you thought but like when this movie did convert she is very believable as a horror movie villain like when she's faced with that mirror thing and she starts coming through the water i was like man this is kind of (laughs) freaky like what she's doing and then she's kind of really going like i said the michael myers terminator route when she's in 838 and she's kind of stumping and limping and she's got blood all over her face and she's just she's just wiping people out like i'm like She's doing a really good job of being scary Mm -hmm. and then has sort of that emotional payoff where she crosses over and kind of faces herself. And I, so that's why I say like, I, I didn't love necessarily like this whole Elizabeth Olsen, this is how we're going to utilize her. But I do think she swallowed up the part. Like I do think she's the best. I think she's the MVP of the movie. That's who I would pick. Um, And I think she does a fantastic job of like, playing this part so differently from how we saw her in civil war or how we saw her even in ultra like she as we said we always give hemsworth credit for playing this same character differently i love the range even if i didn't yeah. necessarily love the choice the, the store the script choices all the time i agree yeah i agree do you <sighs> two things one, do you think Kevin Feige went on this retreat to sort of talk about this whole, like you mentioned? Yeah. Marvel's in a slump. Even though they still, you know, they're still making money and all that other stuff, but Eternals wasn't the movie that we thought it would be. Although, you know, we have our reasons as to why that is. Um,. I think Black Widow has more to do with timing. Had they released this movie before Endgame, I think it would have done much better. Um, what are the films? Well, let's, well like we, we started talking about it on text and I, I've made this point. I said, 
they, there's they've been involved with one truly great film since the pandemic. That's No Way Home. But I can't you can't give them a hundred percent credit. It's still Sony's got to get some shine yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. I like Shang Chi better than you, but and I think Shang Chi is an excellent origin film for a completely new character. But admittedly, it is probably the film that is the most like the old style Marvel in the sense of like the way they introed characters in phase one mm -hmm. shang chi is the mo has the most spirit of that even though i think it's it's well done and as someone who like i said is asian i i love a part asian i loved some of the nods to, to culture there mm -hmm. so i would say that's a very good movie in my opinion then you have like we talk about eternals is a flawed movie there's probably a better one in there but it's still a disappointment i mean anyway you want to yeah, cut yeah. it it's it's a disappointment yeah. right this is a movie yeah. that we were here and they, they thought could have Oscar buzz is not, it's a mess. It's yeah, not yeah, a mess. Yeah. And then you have to me, two vastly overrated movies from a critical standpoint and even a box office standpoint. Like I, I don't think black widows that good. I, I really don't. I think the only reason black widow was regarded the way it was, was because it was the first Marvel movie after we hadn't had one in a couple of years and it got graded on a curve. I think mm -hmm. I think I think you're right in the sense that had they written and released a different movie in 2018, it, it probably would have been a better movie. But I think had they released the exact same movie in 2018, people would have killed it. I, I, people yeah. would have been like, "This is a major misstep." Mm -hmm. And then you got this movie, which officially to me, because it made 450 million dollars a global box, so it probably is going to get to a billion dollars. Well, congratulations, because you just supplanted Captain Marvel as the most financially overrated movie that Marvel's <laughs> ever put out, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's your, that's your resume since Endgame for movies. Yeah. That's one great film, one good film, and kind of a, several misfires to inconsistent films. On the TV side, we talk about it. Loki, one really good show. I think you've got WandaVision. I think you got Moon Knight, Moon which Knight. we talked like some interesting, good television. And then you kind of got like Hawkeye didn't quite get there. And Falcon and Winter Soldier was a real disappointment. And, you know, What If was probably on balance a disappointment. Although I think it's interesting. This movie like stole from What If, like literally yeah, multiple yeah. times. I mean, that scene yeah. where they crash through the realities is the fight scene between yeah, Perfect yeah, Ultron yeah. and the Watcher. Yeah. It is. Yeah. They just yeah. changed the characters. They stole <laughs> yeah. the scene. Yeah, change yeah. the characters. Um, but yeah, so that's not a great batting average for TV either. So I think if we're calling spades spades, I would probably tell you that Marvel and DC are running about even right now in terms of the quality Ooh. they're putting out on balance. Ooh. Or at least as even as they've been in the last 15 years. Okay. And it's not because DC is necessarily rising to the occasion. It's because Marvel's falling back. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think Kevin Feige is having this conversation? So now here's the part where I think, and I, I firmly believe this. I think some of this is by design. I really do. And I don't mean that like Marvel intends to make a bad product. I don't think they ever mean to do that. But I've maintained to you that this is the laboratory. We're in the intermission. This is the phase of experimentation, which is why there is no... Thanos, Infinity Saga, North Star. That's why there isn't one, because they know we're going to mess around. We're going to, like, we've been criticized for not giving filmmakers enough control. Okay, Chloe Zhao, here's your control. Sam Raimi, maybe we'll give you control. Like, let's try the horror genre. Eh, let's try to do a comedy, which, like, you know, like we, we, we goof on She-Hulk all the time without having seen it. Like, but the point of that show, honestly, I don't think is to be like the best thing Marvel's ever made. It's to try a tonal thing that they've never done before and see if it works. Yeah. And so I think they intentionally would have known that we have earned the credibility to where we can put stuff out for a while and make enough money that it's fine. Mm -hmm. But we're going to learn things. And when we feel ready to kind of take the next leap we will consolidate, unify the message and the direction, and then you'll kind of get something that's a little bit more like the buildup to, to Endgame. And I think that's what Kevin was hinting at, like the planning for that 
is now underway. And and I think you're still gonna. With, with that said, you know, Miss Marvel, She Hulk, um, Secret Invasion, you know, uh, Ant Man three, the Marvels. I still think you're gonna see a lot of uh, Guardians three. Well, maybe less so with that, but like you're gonna see a lot of experimentation. What was the Halloween thing they're doing, right? Like you're gonna see a lot of things that are very on Marvel as we know it. So they can then sift through all that and be like, all right, well that, we tried that, that that's not doing that again. But we tried this and we're on to something. So I, in the back of my mind, I see like the back half of this movie. And as much as I'm disappointed in the overall movie, as I said, I gave them a full star because I can see what they tried. Yeah. And like to think that this is the same series of movies that gave you Iron Man 1, like this movie is like not even in the same no. genre as that at all. Yeah. Do you think Marvel with the, you know, the whole multiverse stuff, they've written themselves into a bit of a dilemma in terms of uh, storytelling and connectivity that they have to try to now not necessarily fix because this movie really didn't have anything to do outside of, you know, what's happened with Loki and stuff. Like they don't know that Loki messed all this up and they're talking about, and I was watching a uh, geeks culture explained. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched comic explained. He's, no, he's, he, I'll send you something from him. He's pretty good, but he made a good point that, you know, with these incursions, they're making it seem as, as if you use the dark hold enough and you create an incursion. But it's possible that the incursions are beginning because of what Loki did. They just don't know it. Um, but a lot of people may not know that or understand that. But we don't know exactly what they're doing. We know all of this leads to the uh, secret wars. Yep. How do they get there? We don't know, really. How do we get to these places, Brian? I don't um, know. I, <laughs> it, it's hard to uh, really think too far ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think, as I said, it's, it's a thing that really concerned us from the beginning when both Marvel and DC kind of went down this path of multiverse, right? It's like, it is very easy to put yourself into corners and create huge loopholes that aren't in inconsistencies. And, and it's one of the reasons I think we were so pleasantly surprised by Loki was that the exposition was so tight and the rules were so simple, but like very clear. Mm -hmm. And then this movie kind of comes along and, you know, amazingly, even with the same writing staff kind of muddies it all up. I think, you know, I think the, whole notion of like dreams are really like a window into your multiversal self i don't know how that's gonna hold up amazingly well mm -hmm. um incursions clearly is a secret wars bridge i think like that's the, the notion of like a galaxy's collide universe like that all absolutely is meant as like a prelude to that but yeah, there was some sloppy stuff in, in, in I think how this was laid out. And, and, and that's why I wonder, like, you know, Waldron had to rewrite this. Was the original version a little tighter? Would that did that additional 40 minutes contain more things that would have closed off the loopholes that kind of popped up? Um, like there's some stuff I think. I get this, but like when they're sitting in the cafe and America Chavez is talking to them and they're it, it, so strange post no way home. He only doesn't remember Peter Parker. Is that yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, so that's, he, that's, that's why he would remember that he helped Spider-Man, but he doesn't remember Peter Parker aspect. Yeah, of Spider -Man. That, that was a spell. Nobody, everybody knows that this is Spider-Man, but nobody okay. knows who he is. They don't know so, who Peter Parker is. Yeah. Right. But then like, this movie happens after No Way Home, but in No Way Home, he knows about the idea of multiverses colliding. So why does he seem so bewildered by it in this movie? 
like like remember like in no way home he's the one who tells peter like we cast that spell it opened the door now all of a sudden you got this crossover happening mm -hmm. but then like he seems really disoriented when america chavez tells him about that same phenomenon in this movie and i'm like well he should remember that right like mm -hmm. so that seemed like a kind of a shaky characterization unless i'm missing something about the spell he cast at the end but um, well I, I don't know if he believes that he caused i mean he he definitely caused with the spell that first um um i guess let's call it incursion although the, the the opening of reality into into different ones but to realize that there's other things happening outside of what he did perhaps startled him um but who knows the thing is what with this multiverse stuff uh it certainly begs to have, ask a lot of questions and and un try to it's like we're really having to think harder whereas with something like loki complex ideas are made simple and not to say that we won't be spoon fed but you know i don't want to go crazy you know what i'm saying trying to figure this thing out you know i also think like when you when you start crossing over the same characters in different places i think it becomes very important to like you, you can't leave big loose ends in the universe you're in. So to give two examples, so they made WandaVision essential to this movie. Where's White Vision? How does he not appear in this movie at all? Like, are you telling me that like his girl is going through what she's going through and he can't sense that? Show he doesn't up, show yeah. up ever in this movie at yeah. any point? You also, like if there was if there was a time to bring him back, this would have been it. Yeah, like so you kind of like okay, like that seems like a pretty big thing to leave on the table entirely. Would have, it would have been nice to have that voice of reason if you provided it, you know. And it's like that he's sitting there in six one six, right? You put him out and just we didn't make you put him out in the six one six. You did it in the show. Yeah. You had him go off, presumably to be West Coast Avengers or whatever, to. Pretend like he doesn't exist in this movie, I think is a little bit disrespectful to the fans to be like, we know he's out there and we know he would not be sitting by. So that's like number one. The other one is Doc Strange 1 went, and this is, we'll get the credit scenes, went out of its way in the post, in the mid credit scene to show you Baron Mordo breaking bad because he kills Pangborn and says too many sorcerers. Where the hell was 616 Baron Mordo in this movie? You tell me with all this magic flying around, the guy who's like, there's too many sorcerers going to sit this one out? <laughs> the only mortal we got was 838. To me, that's sloppy, man. Like you, and, and to me, that also makes me sad because it's like what made the post credit scenes amazing when they were pioneered, and Marvel basically pioneered these, was that each one of them impacted what you saw in the next couple pictures. They, they always meant something critical to the, either the next film or the, the end of the phase. When I saw that like there was no 616 Mordo at all in this movie, I kind of was like, you kind of just stuck that in there yeah. and left it on the tape, which is why I'm not impressed by Charlize Theron in, in, in the big credit scene because I'm like, who the hell are why you? Should why should I care? <laughs> exactly. You start losing me when you, and that's the thing, like we've criticized like Sony post credit scenes or like you can't take those for granted. Like those are opportunities to really hook you for that next thing. Yeah. They're not, they are not designed to give some celebrity 30 seconds to kind of costume up and jump on screen. That's what it is. Yo, we, we, I, listen. I am going to get turned off if they try to get all these actors, these, these, you know, a spot. Harry Styles, Charlize now, like, but those scenes don't, they don't impact you yet. 
that's what I'm saying. Like when Nick Fury shows up at the end of Iron Man one and says, I want to talk to you about the Avengers initiative. It's like, it's on. When Thanos, tur- when Thanos turns to the screen, you're like, oh my God, oh, they're God. really going to try this. <laughs> These scenes are not that. Are like, it's like, it makes me want to not, not sit around for it. I'd rather just look it up. Yeah, the, the credit scenes were very disappointing. And if you want to do, listen, would have been what would have been funny if for the for the uh, the last credit scene is having Mortal still stuck in that dish trying to get out. If you want to go funny, not this dude punching himself in his over. It's like that's Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, right? Right, they're those yeah. they're boys, and that's yeah. Yeah, but see, this is why this is why. You let other people do their thing, they do what they want. Me, I would have had Barramoto still stuck in that dish trying to get out, going crazy, <laughs> trying to break that bracelet. But yeah, these 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 mid credit scenes don't mean anything to me. My, you know, my, I didn't get one thing that I wanted, but like to me, what, what was it? the mid credit would have been if you wanted to throw the watcher in there, that's where I would have put him. If you wanted to make it seem like we were seeing something on a grander cosmic scale, but obviously they're not ready to do that. I don't, but it's just like, give me something or give me something that's more directly tied to Secret Wars, right? Because you spent this movie building some groundwork for that. So you got Secret Invasion coming. Maybe there's some connective tissue there. If you want to give me something that like is scroll driven or whatever, that's going to like lead us back towards Secret Wars. Yeah, that also would have been critical. But this was just like, Something that Here's we're not going to see. Yeah. And I'm we're not going like, to see play out. And, and I'm like, okay, well, if she's going to be clear, that's fine. But like, you know, this is a whole other thing. But like, Benedict Cumberbatch has been nominated for multiple Academy Awards. So I'm not criticizing his acting at all. No. But he is not a romantic lead. I hate that. Like, he doesn't really have a lot of chemistry, Rachel McAdams. He doesn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. and like, I've never seen him in a part where I was like, he's a heartthrob. That's not, <laughs> it's not his greatness. It's not his greatness. I'm not saying yeah. that's bad. It's just not his great. Clea is Dr. Strange's love in the comic. I have no faith that Benedict Cumberbatch and Charlize Theron, as great as they are as performers, are going to be believable romantically on screen. But that's clearly what they have to be if you're going to put them 1-1-A in Dr. Strange 3. So I'm already kind of concerned. Yeah, I, I, I foresee us not seeing this uh, battle that him and Cleo were on. I foresee him showing up to shed light as to what's going on with Secret Wars and talk about his uh, adventures with Cleo and, and trying to uh, prevent an, an incursion. But we're never going to see that play out. I think Marvel, I don't know what's going on, Brian. I don't, I I just don't, I I don't think they have, I think probably maybe Kevin is letting go of the reins a little bit. Well, spread too thin. It's a much bigger enterprise. Yeah. And like I said, I do think they're experimenting. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to allow for that. Um, but to get a post-credit scene is like... It's rough. It's like, to miss a post-credit scene, not include Vision in some way, um, Baron Mortal, which you mentioned, these things would have perhaps changed my perception of how this film was done. Right? Um for Scarlet Witch, there was no voice of reason other than when she finally got to her goal, she got rejected. But it would have been nice to have someone like Viz talk to her. And then perhaps she ultimately does what she wants and does something to him. I don't know. But they missed, they, they're missing out on a lot of opportunities, Brian, is what we're saying. It's just the inconsistency, too, because it's, as I said, it's like, we don't make the choices for them in, in the shows, but like it just seems very selective to make WandaVision so indispensable to Elizabeth Olsen's character in this movie. And then A, cut Vision out entirely 
And then B, quite honestly, if you wanted the Agatha Harkness cameo in this movie, like it was there to be had in the sense of like, we need to understand what's going on. And we got this other witch locked up basically or on lockdown. Yeah. I mean, if they wanted to loop her back in for like a a little bit of exposition to kind of explain, like it's literally like we get to Kamertage and Wong is like, this is a being of chaos magic. And I'm like, (laughs) we only just got to hear what that might've meant in WandaVision. Yeah. Like that was supposed to mean something. I don't know. It's just, that's what I mean by sloppy. Like it's like, picking and choosing these things that you've put on the table but like marvel didn't used to do that like marvel used to only do things with purpose that each thing built on the last thing and like really gave you this constant forward momentum and i just feel like we've lost some of that um and i'm fine with self-contained stories but we're not the ones who went out there and promoted to the world that this was you put multiverse in the title. You told us this was the big kickoff in the movies, the multiverse. And it kind of wasn't. It's like yeah. kind of like a self-contained little multiverse story. Yeah. It leads, it takes us nowhere, nowhere to in the future. This felt to me. I think it was just a missed opportunity and uh I don't know. I, I I have high expectations still for Thor of and Thunder. But. Yeah, but th- but see, this is and this is what I mean about multiversal stuff. Like I, I you know I said when I when I crushed Morbius on this on this pod. At the end of that, their post credit scene is this pretty silly multiversal <laughs> team up of Vulture and Morbius that has no weight, no backstory and no and it even has like the inconsistency of what came through the multiverse this wasn't that much better people i'm sorry (laughs) like in terms of just the in terms of the sloppiness of like hey we're gonna throw something hey it's michael keaton stare leto wouldn't it be cool to see him on screen tying together the spider-verse let's just mash them together for a scene and get you to sit through the credits to watch it I kind of felt like this was the same DNA. That's what I mean by like, it felt more like a Sony movie than a Marvel movie. Like I just expect better in yeah. this regard. So. Yeah. Um, all right. I so we, give. Yeah. Oh, I hey, give, I was gonna, can I ask okay, you just a couple sure, other things? Because sure. we haven't talked about America Chavez. What did, what did you think about Shoshi Gomez? And, you, and I guess, what do you think about, there's this weird, like, is Dr. Strange going to be like the, conciliary to the young avengers like he's kind of connecting with like these young characters in several of these projects like is he gonna True. be now like this the you know, like, there's no tony stark right so is he like the point man for because we know right like he's got some connection to wicked and speed now albeit sort of multiversal he definitely has connection to peter he definitely has connection to america chavez like we know young avengers is coming like is that what are they pointing strange to be that I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. I mean, I weird, right? I think Spider Man will probably be the 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 more senior Young Avenger if if that decides to go that route. But who knows, man? Um, So, did you like America Chavez in this movie? Do you feel like she? I know that's something that people are debating right now is how relevant the character. The thing is. They gave her the, oh, I don't know how to use my power stuff, right? It just happens under these extreme conditions. And then there's the talk of you can do it. I just felt like she was like the golden child. <laughs> you know? Um, and she and at the end, he gives her this big speech. And then you know, it was just like, I've seen this all before yeah. type of situation. So no matter how clever you want to make it or however you however you want to write it it's still going to be the same thing right um i'd like had she been had she been in uh no way home i think people would have liked her more i agree with that i think that's what i mean by the scheduling kind of screwed things i it 
I think it would have helped. I think it would have helped and it would have made the impact of what she's able to do make a little bit more sense, right? She would have been consistently kind of like opening these portals. I mean, I like the, I mean, the star portal looked cool. Like I like the power that she had. I will say like, I didn't understand again to the point about the movie being too short. It felt like her fight with Wanda was very curtailed. It was like, she got two, two good power punches in and then she's like, I can't beat you. I'm like you didn't even try. Like, like what's that movie? Buddy Ravel. Buddy Ravel. <laughs> You didn't even try. How could you, you didn't hit yourself? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Three O'Clock High, I suggested, I suggest that you do watch it. It's a classic in my view. But Anyways. didn't it feel short? It was like all of a sudden she gets off the table, she knocks her back, Wanda counters her, and she's like, "Oh, I can't beat you." I'm like, <laughs> "What are you talking about?" Like, I mean, you know, you quit her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I think she, I think she was just poorly used. I, I don't know, man. I think she would, I, I, the way they change things up, if she would, it, uh, we already said it. If she would have been in No Way Home, I think she would have, uh, people would have liked her a little bit more and people would have been uh, more, who knows if this movie would have been more successful than, 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 I mean, it's going to make a billion dollars, but I think in terms of people liking and not having these questions, whether they liked her or not, you know what I'm saying? No, I, that's what I said. The Captain Marvel analog is the right one, right? It's like, yeah. it's a movie that will be highly profitable, highly successful. And then we're going to look back on it and be like, I mean, of the 28 movies they've done, I mean, this one's going to be in the twenties. I think, I don't think it's going to be in the top half. I think to me, the one thing Marvel did, like I said, that I give them credit for, they were smart about. I think a lot of critics that liked it really liked that second hour because they'd seen all these other Marvel movies and they're like, oh, wow. Like they let Sam Raimi like be Sam Raimi for an hour. Mm -hmm. They let him mm -hmm. do Evil Dead stuff. They let him yeah. do, you know, like true horror stuff the way he likes to shoot it. And we got to see that, but with superheroes. A lot of critics, I think, will gave this movie a thumbs up solely because of that. Right? That, They're not man. looking at the big picture. Man. They're looking at the novelty of that. And that's why I say, like, I give Marvel credit for that. But for us, who always want us, who always want to know, like, what's the big picture? What's what's the end game? You know, pun intended. That's where the letdown comes in. That's where it feels yeah. like this was a a missed opportunity to take a step. I lost you. Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. All right. Oh, yeah. I, I, lo I thought I lost you. Oh, okay. Maybe I, oh, yeah, you were frozen. Maybe it was me. I don't know. Okay. I don't think I need to re-say anything. Oh, I think you could probably edit it. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty much done. So, um, I, I give it a, I give it a two as well, Brian. Yeah. I give it a two, a, a two as well. I, 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 I was, I left very disappointed in the film. Um, and not to say that it was a, a horrible. This is the horrible, most horrible film I've ever seen from Marvel. No, 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 it, no. it's not that. It's that I was disappointed in, 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 in. Not getting a fully fight because I was, you know, the multiverse of madness. I wanted to find out more, and I didn't find out more. It's just Wanda trying to get her kids and using the dark hold and Doctor Strange stopping her, and it had nothing to do with the multiverse, so to speak. It's just the multiverse. You're operating within the multiverse, and you have this ability to dream walk, but um, it doesn't lead us towards the bigger picture, as we've been saying. Um, it was his own self-contained film. Are quite different than all the rest of the movies that, that we've seen thus far because they let Sam Remy do his thing. Um, and I can't knock him for trying. You know, people want to say, oh, you know, for those people who expected to have more connection to the MCU and you didn't like it because of that. Like, listen, I like, I like what I like. Right? Uh, um, the movie was fine, but they missed out on a lot of opportunities there. 
had those opportunities not been missed and not necessarily, it doesn't have to be connected to the MCU specifically, but these end credit scenes are there for that. And they missed on that opportunity. They missed on that opportunity to bring back characters that you're wondering about. Of course you want to see Vision. Baron Mordo is still out there. I, I, honestly, Brian, I don't see how he comes back. I got bigger, we got bigger things to do. Secret Wars. What is Baron Mordo doing here? So you missed out on that opportunity as well. Um, yeah, your so final thoughts ask, on, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, can I ask you one other question, which is like, we, I gave my thought, I don't think, so I don't think John Krasinski is going to be Reed Richards. I think this was the one and only time you're going to see them. Now, I mentioned there's a wild rumor going around. So I have to yes. put this in. There is a rumor, because there were so many rumors that Tom Cruise as Superior Iron Man was, was in this movie. There is still a rumor that he was in the movie, that he is or was in the seat that John Krasinski occupies in the movie and was taken out in the reshoot final cut. And Krasinski came in and was basically dubbed into that scene, that he's not actually in the scene at the same time that Haley Atwell and Anson Mount and um, Chiwetel and, uh, and Lashana Lynch are in. But that's a, I mean, that's a completely wild rumor. I have no substantiation of that. But I did want to ask you because they took the time to put Krasinski in as Mr. Fantastic. I don't think he's going to be that again. But if he was, based on the little you saw, do you actually want to see him do it? Because I didn't really like how he did the part. He just played it as oh. like John Krasinski. He played it the same way he plays like Jack Ryan or the guy in Quiet Place. He didn't play it the way I imagined Reed Richards to be. Personally, that was my two cents for the little bit he did it. For me, it was a, a too little of a... Okay. Too short of a, of a cameo in order for me to determine that. Because um, Reed Richards is a boring guy. He's a smart guy, but he's a boring guy. And he's the one that figures things out and talks... Stuff that most people wouldn't even understand. He's talking, but about. I don't and think they, of him as a soft-spoken guy. And this was a soft-spoken guy. This was like a calming, you know, everything's going to be fine. Like I don't think of him as that. I think of him a little yeah. more as arrogant, got a little more edge to him. Like he's a little more, you know, like I don't think the Reed Richards I have in my head would have played that scene and and, and countered Wanda the way he did. He kind of didn't really have a plan. Right. He was like, I'm going to talk her down and I'm going to relate to her as a parent. <laughs> like, I don't think the Reed Richards that I imagine would have gone in with like no plan B, no plan <laughs> C. I don't know. That's just my like. This could be uh, chalked up to a poorly written read or a poorly directed read. And the rumor, and there's also the rumor of John Krasinski possibly directing a, a, a Fantastic Four film. Him starring as, I don't know. We don't know. Um, that's, that's certainly possible. I, for one, would still want to see him play it. But there has to be some direction there in how this character should be played. If you leave it up to the directors to do whatever they want, we're going to get DC and the end of the superhero genre. Begin. That's what I say. They're a lot closer right now than people <laughs> want to admit. I'm telling you, look at it objectively, people. Be fair. Like I think they're actually yeah. not that far apart in terms of how they're operating. Um, let me just ask you quickly, because not the exact number, but general area in the Marvel rankings, one through 28, like what approximately do you, would you have this movie? I said about 20. That was kind of my like, give or take. I didn't have time to think about it, but when I did think about comparing it to another film, I would say this is above, I know this is, this is not going to be popular, uh, Thor The Dark World. Oh, you have it like 27. You have it like yeah. all the way down there. Because you have Thor The Dark World last, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, I don't have it that bad, but yeah, that's that's pretty low. Um, I just didn't. I just didn't, Brian. I just didn't didn't care. They they didn't do enough to 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 keep me invested in it. That's that's just what it is for me. I think the box office is gonna crater on this movie. I don't. I also don't think, by the way. I don't think this is a kid movie. Like I think this oh, stuff no. here. Where well, I'm like, I'm like, we we were we were wondering about like Batman and the rating. Why did this not get rated <laughs> R, man? You saw some dude's head get popped. Like I'm like, there was Car Captain Carter gets cut in half, and you see the shield all bloodied. I'm like, there was some pretty grotesque stuff that they put in here for a PG-13 Marvel movie. I was like, yeah. I don't know. Like I, I actually feel like so this did 450 the opening weekend. I, I'm thinking the drop is north of 70% next week, wow. which, is, which is pretty rough for a, for yeah, a movie yeah. of this profile. You think so? Yeah, I, I do. I think, look, I mean, you know, you're, it's anecdotal, but like you canceled your second viewing. Like, I, I just don't think this is a movie that you have to go back and see. Like, I'm going to do it because I'm a nerd, but like, I don't think most people are going to like see this and be like, I'm going to tell everyone I know they have to see this and I'm going to go see it again. Yeah. Just don't, I don't feel that with this film. Yeah. Let's see, man. Let us see what happens next. Uh, what Kevin Feige, what Kevin Feige has to say when he comes back from his retreat. That's what I'm waiting for. Um, hey, well, we're, we're, we, we are in this position now where we are uh, counting on Taika. <laughs> yeah, we, man. We need Taika to come in and, and, and lift us out of the doldrums with, a, with an F. He, and he's starting to talk about Christian Bale, people. Yeah, we got to talk about that at some point. Um, yeah. That's because that's a big, that's a pretty big uh, statement, what he said. Mm -hmm. Really big. And I, all I said was like, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, let us know in the conversation section what you guys thought of Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness. Was this, uh, uh, did you enjoy watching this film? I'm pretty sure this movie is going to be talked about for quite some time in terms of what it means, because there's a lot to dissect. Um, but I saw it for what it was. WandaVision is trying to get her kids. Doctor Strange is shady. Um, we don't know. If, I mean, obviously, Scarlet Witch is alive. There wasn't enough for me to be excited about to look forward to in the Doctor Strange universe. Will he show up on other films? I think it's when Secret War starts to pop up, I think he'll show up. Who knows where he'll pop up? Do we get a Doctor Strange 3 movie? I don't know, Brian. Well, we will because the box office is going to say that we should. You know what I mean? Like It's going to make enough money that it's going to say that we should. So we will get it. And like Charlize <laughs> Theron didn't sign on to do one scene one true, day. True, true. True, true. I know Benedict coming back he's, he's dying to be done with this i think so we said he's taking a break from acting right so he he's getting did a little he? burned out he did yeah so he's getting a little burned out i think in general yeah yeah but uh yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of this film are you gonna see it twice have you seen it once um and based on what you said do you on, on what we said do you agree with, with our um, dislikes of the film and what we did like? Tell us your thoughts in the comment section below. And um, we really appreciate that. Brian, any last words regarding Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness? No, I mean, like I said, I, you know, some real high points. Like I said, I love the music note fight. I actually really enjoyed the Illuminati fight. I love the horror take. I love the swing at it. I, I still would rather Marvel swing and miss than not swing at all. Um, so I don't want them to stop swinging, but yeah, I'm with you. Just the rare, like real feeling of disappointment afterwards and in, in seeing one of these. But usually yeah, that's and it's like, at. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't, for some reason I feel that way and I don't want to. Yeah. Because is it me? <laughs> you know, what didn't I get from the movie? Uh, I mean, I, listen, I'm not a movie critic or, 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 or like that, you know, I didn't study film or anything like that, but I, you know, I've been watching movies for, for pretty much all my life and I know what I like and I know what I'd like to see, what certain things that I catch and, you know, what a movie fan does. Um, 
And this movie just didn't do it for me. Uh, yeah. Leaves me a bit worried about the MCU. Uh, but hopefully Love and Thunder can bring me back. Because there's a lot of people, Brian, that's just like, that's it. I don't want to watch any MCU movies. I'm done. All right? Uh, I'm not there yet, but I, I think about it. <laughs> I mean, superhero fatigue is co code for bad product. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's be straight, right? Like if movies are good, there's no fatigue. Yeah. Quality starts to slip, quality starts to slip on a consistent basis. That's fatigue. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's our show for today. Please hit, hit us up in the comment section below. Hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, share with your friends, and let's have a discussion about this film. I'm I'm really interested in, in understanding what you guys think of what we said about the film because there's a lot of people who did like it. So yeah, I want to sure. hear you, the, you know, not necessarily defend your position, but tell us why you liked it and why you thought this was perhaps one of the best uh, 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 MCU movies that's come out in the last two years or whatever. Um, but that's our show. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.